That's right, an incredible 4,000 carat diamond. <laughs> I don't think you should drink that. It looks bad for you. Nonsense. It makes me feel great. Smarter. More aggressive. I feel like I could. Like I could. Like I could. Take, Take on, on the world. world. Look, Hoagie, it's a hamster. Just what I need for dissection lab tomorrow. I think I need that for the band, Laverne. You know, like we could bite its head off or whatever. Hands off that hamster. Friend of yours, Bernard? He belongs to Weird Ed Edison, and it looks like he's brought us a note. It's from my old friend, Green Tentacle. He says that Purple Tentacle's mutated into an insane genius and Dr. Fred's going to kill them both. I thought I was free of Dr. Fred and those crazy Edisons forever. But now, I know that I must go back to the mansion. Okay, we'll spread out commando style. Laverne, you go secure the area behind those double doors. Hoagie, you take care of upstairs reconnaissance. I'll maintain Command HQ here in the lobby. What are we looking for? We've got to find where Dr. Fred is holding the tentacles. 
This better not take too long. I've got an anatomy final tomorrow. And I've got a show to set up later tonight. If I'm late, I don't get to test the drums. If I know Dr. Fred, he's got the tentacles tied up in his secret lab. Question is, where's his secret lab? Out of order. Out of order. Aha! A secret passage. This is all too easy. Laverne, how'd you get upstairs? Am I upstairs? I got lost. Seen any tentacles? What's a tentacle? Oh, just something I whipped up in my spare time. Made good pets, actually. Until one of them tried to take over the world. Had to tie the little buggers up in the basement. Good thing you told us that. Yeah, Bernard wanted us to set them free. Thank God you weren't that stupid. Did you say Bernard? Okay, you're free to go. Thanks, Bernard. Yes, thank you, naive human. Now I can finish taking over the world. <laughs> Wait! Oh, yeah. Now I remember. He's incredibly evil, isn't he? Uh, I'll try to talk him out of it. Well, what possible harm could one insane mutant tentacle do? Leaping lab rats! Dr. Fred! What have you done this time, you meddling milk toast? Now Purple Tentacle is free to use his evil mutant powers to take over the world and enslave all humanity! Whoops! Our only hope now is to turn off my sludge magic machine and prevent the toxic mutagen from entering the river. Isn't it a little late for that, Doctor? Of course! That's why I'll have to do it! Yesterday! To the time machine! This is all your fault, Bernard. Behold, children! The Chronogen! Doc, can't you just send Bernard? No, you must all go to increase the odds that one of you will make it there alive. Have any people ever been hurt in this thing? Of course not. This is the first time I've ever tried it on people. Well, I'll be... Bernard, float over here so I can punch you. This must be that Woodstock place Mom and Dad are always talking about. What could it all mean? I don't know. I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Die. <laughs> Die. We may not live to see yesterday. I'm sure Dr. Fred wouldn't have done this if it weren't safe. After all, he is a doctor. It works! I can't believe it! And they said Imitation Diamond wasn't good enough. Uh-oh.
Cheap mail order jewels. What happened to Hokey and Laverne? I knew I should have bought a real diamond. Are they alive? My dials say that the larger specimen landed 200 years in the past, and the other is stuck 200 years in the future. Well, hurry up and bring them back. I will, as soon as I get a new diamond. Then all your buddies have to do is plug in their respective chronogons and... Plug them in? Where is Hoagie going to find an electrical outlet 200 years in the past? Yes, well, he'll be needing my patented super battery then, won't he? Now, where did I put those patented super battery plans of mine? Plans? How are we going to get Hoagie plans? Don't worry me with details, boy. Just help me find the plans. They're in this house somewhere. Now what am I going to do? I think I made myself perfectly clear. Step one, find plans. Step two, save world. Step three, get out of my house. Let's get cracking. I don't think it's much use without a diamond. No way. No way. No way. It can't do anything without a new diamond. Maybe I put them upstairs. That's got to be it. Upstairs! I think it's designed to run with something. More like a small rodent. There, it's off. But it's too late now. I've got the plans! Quick, we have to flush them to Hoagie! How did you get over there? My ingenious super battery design, please. You really flushed them. Yes! Down the toilet. No, through time. Using the highly sophisticated time flux hydraulic vortex chamber I've installed in each chronogen, you can flush small inanimate objects to each other through time. Flush small inanimate objects to each other through time. Hello? Dr. Fred, can you hear me? Drat. Did you hear something? No. Let's see if what's-his-name catches on. Oh, great. I'm stuck in colonial times. Tentacles are taking over the world. And now the toilet's backing up. Hoagie! Come over here! It's your old pal, Dr. Fred! Dr. Fred? How'd you get in there? I want you to pick up those plans you see in the chronogen, Hoagie. Bring them to Red Edison. He's my great, 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 great grandfather. He'll know what to do. You need the plans to make a super battery so you can plug in your chronogen. Okay, if you say so, Bernard. Good boy. Does he have any experience with electronics? Um, well, I once saw him take 3,000 volts directly through his head without batting an eye. Didn't he pass out? Well, he was already passed out when it happened. Time for me to save the world, I guess. Ye olde outhouses. 
It's attached to the chronogon. Huh, this door appears to be locked. I'd rather use a tree. Huh, this door up. Nah, it stinks. I can't reach it. I can't reach it. Making it dirtier won't help. I don't wanna. What's up? Don't feel like talking, huh? Vow of silence or something, probably, right? Well, that's cool. I have something for Red Edison. You wouldn't be him, would you? Great hat, man. I dig the three-corner idea. It's like the pyramids, you know? My friend Eddie told me the pyramids are built by aliens. Way. Well, nice talking to you, dude. That would not be respectful. Besides, I might get caught. Padlocked. Don't touch that, it's government property. Hey, keep your hands off that. You can look, but don't touch. Excuse me. Yes? Oh, you're like George Washington. Very much like him, according to my wife, Mrs. Washington. Does Mrs. Washington know you wear so much makeup? One must wear makeup when one receives the phenomenal amount of media attention that I do. It's quite likely that I'll be president soon, you know. Do you think I should be the ecology president or the education president? I think ecology is very important. Yes, of course, but what really matters is which one sounds better. Do you really have wooden teeth? As a matter of fact, I do make use of artificial teeth. I find them to be far superior to the ordinary enamel variety. Don't you have a problem with splitters? I've been to war, boy. No one who's heard the thunder of musket fire, smelled the sulfur from a cannon blast, and felt the fear in the hearts of his comrades is going to be bothered by a little thing like, ah, oh, blast it. Well, what about dry rot? Hardly. Where could I get some of those? They're rather expensive. Mine were custom made for me by my good friend, Paul Revere. Didn't he ride a horse through town naked? I believe you have him confused with someone else. Wow, what do you brush them with? I use a toothbrush, much like everyone else. And a bit of wood polish, of course. Don't they make a disposable kind? Actually, I believe the proprietor of this inn is working on something like that. Is it true about you and the cherry tree? Oh yes, it's quite true. 
Why, I've cut down acres of cherry trees in my day. I bet you've lost it. You couldn't cut down a tree to save your grandmother. Lost it, have I? Why, I'd show you a thing or two if there were a cherry tree nearby. But as you can see, there isn't. I only cut down cherry trees. Family tradition, you understand, cherries only. There's nothing out there but cedar and kumquats. Hey, tall, dark, and spiffy, my name's Hoagie. Well, how quaint. I am, of course, Thomas Jefferson, noted scholar, musician, horseman, student of the sciences, member of the bar. Oh, sure, I've heard of you, dude. What's in the can, Tommy? Thomas. My name is Thomas, and this, my chubby friend, is a time capsule. Filled with remembrances of our time to be revealed 400 years hence. So, how's the time capsule going? I'm sorry to say that except for my log, we haven't got a thing. Dude, I loved your work on the Declaration of Independence. Ah, thank you. What was your favorite part? I like those S's that look like F's. I see. What are you guys doing in here? We're writing the Constitution for the United States. Right now, it's just a Constitution, I'm afraid. We hit a slight creative block right after the preamble. That's why we put up a suggestion box over there. Has anyone ever told you you're a very snappy dresser? Why, yes. I studied at Virginia Coat and Technical, where I majored in color theory. I was captain of the varsity for that team. Those are impressive credentials, Tom. Thomas. Well, later, dude. What? What's going to happen later? Sorry, I'm saving it. It's going to be... Must have poor circulation. Yo. Hello. What's up, you cold? Cold? I'm freezing. Why don't you build a fire? Well, I keep asking Jefferson to build a fire, but he won't. Says he needs the log for posterity and won't part with it. He's going to give the log to starving children? I don't get any respect around here. Why, I bet if George, I spent the winter in Valley Forge, Washington was cold, we'd get some heat in here. Awesome blanket there, dude. Thank you. It was given to me by my dear old colorblind Aunt Hattie. Shouldn't you guys be working instead of just sitting there? Writer's block. We can't think of any um, amendments or anything, so we put a suggestion box over there. I don't suppose you have any b brilliant ideas? No music in elevators. No music in what? How come you sign your name so big? Astigmatism. Really? Let me see your palms. All right. The, the, the truth is that a friend once told me that women go c crazy over guys with a big signature. Well, I gotta go, dude. I don't wanna. I don't wanna. Bitch it.
It's a little cage with a canary in it, perched above a little lever, huh? I don't wanna. I don't wanna. I don't wanna. I don't wanna. It's the battery plants I'm supposed to give to that red ed. It's closed. I'm guessing it conceals the entrance to a secret lab. It's covered with plans and junk. Mmm, super battery, eh? Brilliant designs. Sometimes I amaze myself. Now all I need is oil, vinegar, and some gold. Ah, excellent. I need that for my super battery. Hey. What is it? You look kind of familiar. Of course I do. I'm Red Edison, the inventor, not to mention owner of this inn. Perhaps you've seen my picture in some important scientific journal. Then again, maybe not. Do you know Ben Franklin? Franklin? <laughs> I would never associate with that overstuffed goofball. He has the stupidest idea about glasses with one red lens and one blue one. Oh, I think I'll be moseying along now. Well, don't mosey over anything breakable on your way out. Hey! Only employees are allowed to use that lab coat. How about an amendment that the president has to be a human being? Please, this is serious business. You're right. Don't get your curls in an uproar. Excuse me, Mr. Washington. Boy, what a mess. The late Max Addox. His petard runneth over. A lamentable fate for such a... I told you guys I'll get to the flag next. I'm working as fast as I can. Hey, chill. Take your time. Don't tell me you've got another design change for the flag. I've got another design change for the flag. I knew it. What's the current brainstorm from our fickle founding fathers? How about a skull with, like, scorpions in its mouth? Oh, what the heck. At this point, I'd do anything just to have it over with. Put the pattern on the table, and I'll look at it when I'm done with this job. Gosh, I never want to mess with this. I don't want them. I know that already. I couldn't sleep in here with all the racket. 
Who asked you to? I don't understand that technical stuff. Hey, what's that on the plans? It looks like a secret backwards message. Oh, it's just a coffee stain. Grody, man. I don't go through people's underwear. Grody, man. I don't go through people's underwear. Nah, there's printer's ink on, nah, there's printer's ink on the sheet. It looks like someone's dentures were in here. Hey, I've got to put them somewhere. Uh, hi, horsey. Oh, hi yourself. What's a nice horse like you doing in a place like this? Hey, I live here. What are you doing here? I'm trying to get back to the future and save the world. The future, huh? And I thought that Franklin guy was off his nut. I didn't think horses could talk. Maybe they just never had anything to say to you. Ever think of that? You mean horses have been snubbing me my whole life? Well, if you want to put it that way. Is this some kind of a trick? I don't do magic, I'm just a horse. Nice teeth. Thanks. I paid quite a bit for them. Well, I gotta go. See you later. Question is, which one's stuffed and which one's the real McCoy? I assure you that we are both real, but we are neither one of us McCoys. We are Edisons, Ned and Jed. Who's who? Does it really matter? Even our dear father can't tell us apart. He only knows that one of us is left-handed while the other is right, but that neither of us are following in his tiny scientific footsteps. Hold still, Jed. So, I'm almost too frightened to ask, are you the marble delivery man? Or the model? I'm the model, should I take my clothes off now? No, no you most definitely should not. We couldn't get your body shape right anyway, unless we cemented two slabs of marble together. But then your statue would have a big seam in it. That's okay, it would have one anyway. Look, don't call us, we'll call you. Dang. I'm no marble delivery man, but rock is my life. <laughs> I'm sure that's terribly amusing, where you're from. Where exactly did you come from? I live off campus with Bernard and Laverne. How nice for you. How nice for Bernard. How nice for Laverne. How nice for everybody. Well, actually, they never let me play my music very loud. Yes, of course. Well, goodbye. I'm the delivery man, okay, if I unload in here? Actually, we are well supplied with medium, so thank you, no. This ain't medium, it's the extra large stuff. Please go away. We artists are very sensitive to your kind of people. What kind of people? Big, dumb people. Sorry, hope I haven't jostled you. Too late. I 
I don't wanna. 